guys! After 3 weeks of using the ACR Alice Plus stock, I finally had the time to mod it. In this video, I'll be discussing my modding process as well as elaborate my final thoughts on the keyboard. If you haven't watched the first two videos, then I encourage you to as I tackled all the parts and features of the board in those videos. This one will serve as my overall thoughts of the board in the 3 weeks I've used it. To start with, let's answer the most asked question right after I release my first video. Is it easy to adapt to an Alice layout? And I'll say, it depends. If you are a touch typer, then you'll get used to this layout in just a day or two. I myself still struggle with the G and T key being positioned on the far left, as I often hit those keys with my right index finger. Otherwise, the curved nature didn't bother me at all, and it did improve my muscle memory switching back to a normal layout keyboard. On average, I get 100 words per minute on the Alice, a tad down from my usual 120 words per minute. But I think that's fair enough since I only daily drove this for 3 weeks. The included switches that came with the kit were too light in my opinion, and though the crystal switches were able to illuminate the RGB well, it lacks the distinct high pitch sound I like. The switches are more on the talky side rather than being clacky. If you love that sound profile, then this would be a perfect pair with the ASA keycaps. I also heard that Ako will be releasing a black version and a bare bones version soon, so if you rather have other switches and keycaps, definitely wait for those. Finally, judging from my sound test video, I determined that the board was on the deep side of the sound spectrum, partially because of all the phones as well as the switches. In modding this keyboard, my main goal was to be able to brighten up the sound of the board significantly more, as well as make it have ample flex. To be able to achieve this, I'll still be using the alloy plate but will be removing any foam. I'll be also using JWK Lagoons as my tactile switches. For keycaps, I use some self propel keycaps to match. We'll also try out Ako's new screw-in stabs into the mix, as the board supports not only plate mount but screw-ins as well. With all of those done, let's get into modding. In modding, I first removed the Alice Plus ASA keycaps. You could also see that for the majority of the weeks I've been using this, I changed out the switches to gathering yellows, as they were heavier than the included switches. I got frequent mistypes on the crystal switches as they were too light and with the weird layout, I was bound to mistype often. Next up, I disassembled the board using the hex key in the box. There are a total of 12 screws on the back that secures it shut. Carefully removing the upper case, I then proceeded to gently remove the JST cable from the daughter board and out of the case. After that, I unclip the plate mount tabs and detach the standoffs off of the alo plate. This is to be able to put in Ako screw in tabs properly. In this case, I looped them with Grytox 205G0 on the stem and housing while Permatex was dabbed on the wire. No other mods were done to the tabs to keep it simple. Screwing it all back in, I then applied two layers of tape mod to the back of the PCB, making sure that I already screwed in the stabilizers and the standoffs. Finally, I harvested 68 pieces of the lagoons as well as the sal keycaps from my Apomaker TH80. Be just soon, by the way. And with that, here's the Alice Plus fully modded.
what do you think of the sound? For me, with the addition of the salt keycaps, it was able to amp up the sound of the board. No longer was it muted and deep sounding. The stabs were also easy to loop up and assemble. I didn't even wear balance and clip no legs. All it needed was Crytox and Permatex. Price-wise, the board is retailing for around $120. And for that amount, it's a steal. The keycaps and switches alone are worth half the asking price. And for what you're getting, I think it's worth it provided you're looking for a budget RSU layout keyboard. So that's about it. Do you have any other questions about the board? Don't forget to ask them in the comment section down below. And I'll gladly help. Like and subscribe to see more contents like this. I'm John J. Bilmaba, and I'll see you in the next video.